wanted to see our community have access to more nutritious food. It's a highly um, Latino prod, um, community and we wanted them to have healthy foods and look at foods that uh, they might not be eating regularly that are good for them. So yeah, we wanted to have access to to doing stuff like this. We really wanted to see our community. Um, so we're both, we both grew up here. composting which is actually my favorite type of composting and that's directly on the floor um, this isn't convenient for a lot of families for different reasons uh, you the piles they are a lot of work um, they do attract some insects they attract cockroaches they attract crickets but they also attract really beneficial insects they attract um, earthworms um, and centipedes and all sorts of other good stuff. They also attract uh, lizards here at ours and it creates a really cool ecosystem. The lizards, they eat the crickets and it, it just works. I like, my personal favorite is um, floor, floor composting. So how do you start a floor compost pile? Well, let me explain it. It's very simple. You're first gonna start with a base of dry leaves or sticks or some sort of um, dry component so directly on the ground you don't have to level it or anything you're gonna add a little bit of your dry product you can smooth it out if you like after that you're gonna add your green products and those are gonna be your kitchen scraps grass clippings um, coffee grounds, eggshells, nutshells, whatever else you want to add to there. So you'll add it directly on top of your base. And you're going to want to wet this just a little bit. this you're gonna add another component of your brown material and once again you're gonna want to wet this as well Now this is going to be the start of your compost pile. Every time you have kitchen scraps, maybe about one time a week, you're going to come out here and you're going to dump them on this pile. Every time you bring those kitchen scraps, you need to incorporate airflow. So you need to, what we call, turn your compost pile. You can use a shovel. I personally like to use a pitchfork. It's a little easier. So you'll just, you'll pick up and, you're t and you'll turn it. And each time after you've come and turn your pile, you're going to moisten it again.
And that's all it takes to do your compost pile on the floor. You're gonna also wanna cover this and you can cover it with a tarp, you can cover it with plastic, or we use a landscape fabric. It's a breathable mesh and you're gonna wanna cover this so that you can deter vermin from coming in. In the three years we've had this pile, I've had a mouse appear one time and that's because I forgot to cover it. So in order to reduce the possibility of cats or dogs or rodents coming in, it is an absolute must that you cover it. So this was just a mini example of how to start one. I wanna show you what our pile looks like. So this is our current compost pile. Um, these are, this is made of the scraps we've been picking up from the neighborhood volunteers. And this is gonna get big and then it's gonna get real small. It's gonna get real big when you first start adding all your scraps and all your leaves and mixing everything together. You're gonna have a big pile. But then eventually it's gonna start shrinking down. The awesomeness of the decomposition is gonna happen and you're gonna wonder what happened to my big old mountain pile. Well, as you can see, we, um, you can easily see fruits and, and limes here and fresh vegetables because we just, we just dumped this Saturday morning. super necessary but like I said it's a good stress reliever so I like to kind of chop things up okay so I just uh, demonstrated how to start a pile that was a very mini version of what we have before you this is our compost pile and it started the same way we started with dried leaves um, we had a generous donation of tomatoes and we stacked that on top and then I put a, some mulch on top of that and began the process and this is where we are now. And so every two days I'm out here with this pitchfork turning this compost and you have to turn it so that you can let air in otherwise it's just going to compact and it's going to start stinking and nothing's going to break down. You have to you have to bring air into it. And in about two more weeks, I think we're gonna be ready to stop adding to this pile and I'll actually start another pile. I'm gonna stop adding um, kitchen scraps to here because we're gonna try and let it work itself out a little bit. That way I can begin the screening process here. Okay, so the second option we want to talk about is bin composting. This is a really convenient option if you have families, you're busy. Um, it's really convenient, it's really easy, and it's kind of no muss, no fuss. So, what you need with the bin composting is number one, your bin and your materials. You want to make sure that you have a good um, ratio 60 40 green materials to brown materials. So I'll give you a good example of how we can do it. Like I said, really easy. Then, you to wet it down just a little bit. Not soaking, you don't want it to be soaked. Close your bin. Give it a good <laughs> shake. And there you go.
Uh, well, we already, I was already um, recycling and stuff like that, but it, now I'm more conscientious about what, uh, what can be composted and what can't be composted, um, what can be thrown in there, uh, what types of uh, food waste I can use what types of food waste I can. So that's kind of that's kind of changed how I throw. Yeah, you know, I, at first with the composting, I used to just throw. If it was if it was food or vegetables or fruit, I would just throw it in there. <laughs> now now I know. Now, nice. I have a better idea. Okay, the third type of composting we're going to talk to you about is vermiculture composting. And this is really fun to do if you have kids um, or if you live in a small apartment and you really don't have any space to do any outdoor composting, this is perfect for your small apartment. So um, you can buy these kits or you can make your own with one of those um, storage bins. Either way works. What you're going to want to start out with is um, newspaper on the bottom. Um, full sheets or you can use paper towels that's going to cover the holes at the bottom to keep the worms from going out um, and then you're going to add some shredded newspaper on top and when you add the shredded newspaper you're just going to get a water gun and you're going to you're going to give it a, a few squirts so that it gets a little bit moist um, after you've added your, your newspaper uh, you're going to add your kitchen scraps just like you would in composting but with worms, you have to be a little bit more careful. Um, they don't really care much for really hot things like chiles or onions, um, garlic, not so much. And you're gonna have to be a little bit careful on your citrus as well, like lemon and orange. That one's a little debatable. Some people say their worms eat them. Um, my worms that I've had in bins don't really care too much for them. Um, but you're gonna get to understand your worms what they like and what they don't like mine love cilantro and aguacate they're totally latinos i think they're latino worms they love cilantro and aguacate and mangos forget mangos they love them um anyway so i got off track so you're gonna add your you're gonna add your food scraps in there and then you'll add your coconut core if you buy a kit or you can add some you can add some dirt on top from you know just as long as it's not hard clay uh, you're just going to add an inch. They actually don't like to have that much dirt on top of them. So just add a, an inch of dirt and once again get your spray bottle and spray the dirt down so that it's, it's nice and moist. It's not soaking, but it's moist. Um, after you have that bin set up, you're going to be feeding your worms. And I have, a, I have some old tomatoes. They got a little squishy. And I have some, some old greens in here. And when you're feeding your worms, you're gonna wanna, you're gonna wanna make a little hole. You could get a little shovel, a little spoon, and you're gonna clear the dirt away. And you can add them in different spots if you want. It really doesn't matter. They'll, they'll migrate towards wherever the the food is. But you want to make sure you cover it completely with your dirt or coconut core. Otherwise, um, you're gonna start putting your bin off balance and you're gonna have a lot of flies and it's it's just not good. Just like compost, you need to cover it completely. And you're gonna check on your worm bin every few days. Um, sometimes they eat a lot, sometimes they don't. If they don't really dig what you're putting in there, they're gonna take their time. They'll eventually eat it, they'll get hungry and they'll eat it just like kids, they're gonna eat it. And just check on the moisture. You wanna make sure that they have enough water that they're not drying out because worms will dry out and if when you first get your worms some of them might escape and you might see them on the floor dried out they're gonna look like fideos but they're just getting acclimated um but you don't have to worry about them running all over your house um it gets a little it takes a little getting used to your worms but i really like them they become part of the family and um you know once this is gonna take a while. This is gonna take about three to four months for them to compost the food. They call it um, the worm poop. Um, it, 
this core will turn into a nice black consistency. It's gonna be all the worm castings. And um, when you can see the moisture nice and black, you're gonna wanna add the second um, container. How do you like the worms? How do you, mm, oh, I feel okay. You like, didn't like them at first, huh? I didn't like the first, but uh, then I start to learn something, something else, something, something <laughs> different, different things, and I'm, I'm okay with everything. They gross you out, huh? Mm, no. Not anymore. At first, they did. You didn't like the worms. <laughs> So this is the opening of the garden. Um, she fortifies it really well because there's a peacock that um, likes to come in and munch on her food. So it's really well electrified here. Uh, but yeah. I mean, we, it really does help us to realize what we're throwing away. Because sometimes you're like, oh, like, I bought all those bananas, now we're throwing them all away. Or, you know, so you try to like be more conscientious. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One day when my grandma put noodles in compost. She did put the noodles in there. I don't know <laughs> why. Are you supposed to put noodles in compost? No. Why? Because the noodles are not good for it. <laughs> <laughs> what else have you found? Uh, I heard a story about cheese. Oh yes, Jeez. so one time he picked up some compost and um, there was a big block of cheese in there. So a lot of it is a little bit of education for our people, making sure they know what they can and can't put in there. Because it's not all food waste, obviously. It's, you know, some things that can break down, but cheese doesn't break down <laughs> in the same way. So okay, cups. Or K cups, yeah. we get a lot of K cups. Oh, like. or donuts. Donuts. <laughs> oh, you know we did have a donut in there really? one time. Mm -hmm. We did. So yes. Oh. So what's uh what what can you actually put in there? What's yeah. So you can put lemons in there. Yeah. That's the best, not the juicy part of it. And the juicy part? Yeah, we can put the juicy part. As long as it's fruits, vegetables. Oh. Um, coffee beans, and, eggs. But no macaroni. No macaroni. Or donuts. Or donuts. Um, anything that's kind of natural, right? Um, if it's a, how do you say, um, if it's kind of processed, then that, that shouldn't go in there. And meats, meats. Like anything that's cooked, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, nothing that's cooked. 
Except for coffee grounds, right? That would be the big exception, but not cake cups. Right. right. <laughs> no cake cups. <laughs> we like the coffee, not the cups. Yeah. 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 So you can just t just take it out. <laughs> put, the cake put the cake cups in your recycling oh. and the and the the oh, coffee and the uh, compost. Okay. Um, is there anything else you guys want to add? Well, I I would say I um I have taken taking on the um, more responsibilities at work. So these guys have been awesome in helping me to get it done on Saturdays. So they wake up early in the morning and they pick up the very stinky compost. <laughs> and, um, you know, I think he does enjoy seeing us throw it in the pile and kind of mash it all up. So that's been kind of... I, I see bugs in there. Yeah, it goes quick though. Like we'll drop it off, and by the next by the the next week, it's already bro almost all broken down. It's it's, it's kind of fun because you can like just chop everything up with the <laughs> with the um the shovel. Yeah, I mean I like seeing the the vegetables and the fruit that we normally eat going somewhere into other than the trash, and then from there like you grow more vegetables, and it's this constant cycle of like you see energy, and it doesn't it doesn't disappear. It just keeps you know, going back into the same cycle, that's awesome. But even just, cook, even if you use all your vegetables, there's still a certain amount of, like, leftover uh, waste and scraps that could easily be turned into soil and then turned into more food. And so it's awesome to see. And, like, you know, for our own garden, I, I love using the compost because the, the vegetables really, really take off once you start using them. Yeah, he was there the last two times, huh? Yeah. Yeah. He's big, huh? He's always there. Mm -hmm.